Still talking about the postponement, of course, but we have a politician here with, uh, with us to talk about um, their perspective on, on things from over the weekend. Olu Bankole Wellington, thanks for being here today. How are you, sir? <laughs> Good to see you, bro. Introduce you as a politician. That's... Yes, and every time they say it, I'm like, oh, yes, yeah. that's right, actually. Yeah. So Banky W is not here today. Yeah. But let's, uh, on, on to why you're here, let's, as a politician, you're running for office. Mm -hmm. uh, your, your election was supposed to hold yesterday. By now, you should be knowing or is getting a feel of whether you are, mm -hmm. uh, what the results would be. Um, what, how, was that, how did that come to you? Because people thought of maybe some politicians knew. Mm -hmm. you, you guys are the stakeholders, quote unquote. How did you get the results of, of the news? So, you know, you know the funny thing, um, <clears throat> there were rumors through the grapevine. In fact, when I, when I was preparing to run for office three, four months ago, a seasoned politician told me categorically, Banky W, these elections will not hold on the day that they've announced. As far because, back as then. As far back as then, because they've never hold, held on, the, on day. the day that we say that they're going to hold. The last three election cycles, you said it already, the last three elections, they've always been postponed. So, you know, coming up to the day, we, we thought, okay, maybe they will be postponed. And then every time you would hear from INEC, it's like, no, it's going to hold, it's going to hold, it's going to hold. So... You know, it's particularly painful to kind of smaller campaigns, independent campaigns like mine, because, you know, you, you throw everything against the wall the night before. There's, there's not one T-shirt left, no poster. You've spent everything that you have just throwing it against the wall, saying, okay, tomorrow is the D-Day. And then you find out that they've moved it a week. So I don't know about other people. We have an agent network of 300 plus people who we had to house, feed, pay, you know, 350 people, this entire matrix of just for moving the, for elections. just for elections to mobilize for elections. Is that agents elections. for your polling units? Agents for okay. the polling units, mobilizers, welfare, monitors, the coalition center people, the person who's going to be at the, you know, so you have this entire network of people that you've kind of green lit thinking the night before everything is fine. And now we have to do it again a week from now. I don't even know where we start from. But, but more, more important to me is the fact that it is the people lowest on the food chain that suffer the most. It's a saying that when two elephants are fighting, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, you know, and it's like, what, what about the coppers? How do we have almost 200 billion to be spent? And they don't remember to take care of our coppers who are sleeping on fields, out in the cold, getting bit, getting treated like second class citizens. How about our friend who's getting married? The people who've planned lifelong events for the 23rd who now have to figure out how to move them. How about the people that traveled? My brother flew back from Yankee just for the weekend, took Friday and Monday off work that I must be there for these elections. He's flown, now he's flying back on Monday, and it's, come, it's a waste of money. It's people who travel to their villages to vote, and we can't even get an apology. Like that's, you know, Nigeria, we've, we've got it wrong, man. We've, we, our leaders need to understand that your job is to serve the public. Your job is to care for the public. Where's the compassion? Where, how do you have all of this budget for elections and you think you don't spare a thought for the, the coppers and the ad hoc staff that are working? And you leave them, they, I saw the pictures, it was completely, completely heartbreaking. I even want to offer INEC in a tier side that please, we, as, as MDP, the small party that we are, we decided that we could not let our agents not be comfortable. So aside from paying them, aside from feeding them, we bought mattresses. I bought over 300 mattresses the night before election so that our people will have somewhere to sleep. My only regret is that we didn't buy more because the coppers were sleeping outside. So, so to INEC, you know, if you don't have money for coppers to sleep, <laughs> we, we will donate mattresses to you, please. And I'm not joking. I'm being serious. We'll donate those because it's ridiculous. How do we, it is how do we, how do we, how do we, how do we punish the people that Need the, the, the coppers make what 19k a month, and they're so fundamental, and they're so elections. fundamental to what we're doing. We, first of all, we're not even paying them enough now. We can't even provide good arrangements for them to sleep, for them to be properly taken care of in this whole mix of things. So, you know, for me, it's, it's disappointing, it's, yeah. it's painful, it hurts, it's frustrating. But you know, I spoke in my church today and I told people, I said, now is the time to double down, now is the time to be even more resolute because the way Nigeria has functioned it will frustrate you just because of how it's ineffective. It might not even be a ploy by one of the major because parties. Because things just, it's sort just, of events just conspire just, you to know, just not... Like, yeah. like, can we discuss the fact that Elections Day is a logistical nightmare and we don't have logistics... People who project managers, logistics people, why are they not the ones 
running, running elections. Sure. Elections Day is like running the Super Bowl for a whole country. It's like the Olympics in one day for 100, 200 million people. It's like the, the biggest event once every four years. You need the people that consult for Olympics, for World Cup, the finals, the people who understand how to move thousands of people in and one things. day. It's an event. It's something, you, you know, I, and, and, you know, and I, I want to pick my words carefully because I don't want to make the INEC people seem bad because I know I've met them and a lot of them, their hearts are in the right place. But can they get actual help? Can they get support? Yes, the, yeah. the professors can be there because, you know, character and credibility, and that's great. But the logistics the of it, how about that? How about we get yeah. people that... How many more times are elections going to be postponed before we realize that maybe yeah. we, we've, we've well, kind of got this wrong? Well, even, even the, uh, the INEC chairman did mention that yesterday at his press, press briefing where he was uh, talking about the fact that after these elections, we all need to sit down Agreed. and think about how we want to ha handle our elections going Agreed. forward. Because even he has admitted that things are not working Agreed. and we can't continue to do this. But I want to ask you now, on, on, on a, from the perspective of a politician, because we are voters, we... Yeah. Basically deal with INEC, collect our PVCs, then wait to go vote. And even yeah. that in itself was tedious. Mm -hmm. Registry was tedious. Picking mm -hmm. up PVCs was tedious. Mm -hmm. Going to vote is tedious. Some people still don't know their polling units mm -hmm. because you can't find that on the INEC website. Mm -hmm. you know? But as a politician now, how has it been dealing with INEC? Because credibility is a big issue now for a lot of people. You, for one, I know you had even an issue with your logo, yeah. for example, yeah. being changed without your yeah. consent or permission. Yeah. You know, yeah. things like that. How has it been dealing with INEC? You know, for me, it's, it's a... Um, it's been frustrating. I mean, I, you know, on the one, on the one hand, you know, I've, I've met some of the national commissioners of INEC, and I, I can see that their hearts are in the right place, and they really want to do a good job. But on the other hand, the system is so ineffective, and the things that need to be in place, it's just, and these are the problems that we have in Nigeria as a whole. So, it, so it's that ineffectiveness, that counterproductivity, that just the way that, that things are. And, and, and the problem is we've never sat down to say, okay, maybe we need to take a second look at this and ensure that, you know, going forward, I mean, and, and I think this is a challenge to the whole country, let's try and right some of these wrongs. Let's try and say, okay, maybe we missed the boat here. In elections, maybe we need logistics people handling it. Let's, let's just go back and look again and say, okay, you know, and, and, I, and I want to pick my words carefully because obviously I'm still contesting and I don't want anybody to say that I'm trying to paint INEC bad because I'm not. But it is pretty obvious that there's, there are problems with yeah. the way these things have been set up and we end up suffering the brunt of it. So I think, I think it's a, a call to action. I think it's a wake up call. I think we need to sit down and look again. Do you know that Macron cannot be chairman of INEC? The president of France cannot be chairman of INEC because he's too young. So, 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 so let's, let's understand that, yes, the not too young to run bill was a good thing and that it became a law is a good thing. But there are still age limits on many federal parastatals that say, unless you are this, you cannot be appointed into this position. But if we're talking about elections and moving, there's a lot of moving pieces. There's, you, need, you need youth there. You need people who are young, who can move fast, people who are familiar with technology. That, you know, so it's like... We got not too young to yeah. run to pass that step one, but now how about not too young to get the job done? You know, how about we we start understanding that it's, it's it, you know it's not even about getting young people in; it's about getting credibility in; it's about getting expertise in. Yeah. How about we do that? Yeah.